Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am your host, Renee Bauer, and I have a super exciting guest here today. So let me just jump into it and introduce you to her because I really want to dive into what we're going to be talking about today. So I am here with Judy Holler, who is a best-selling author, speaker, host of the Fear Boss podcast, and CEO of Holla Productions. She's been professionally trained in improv theater, and her book, Fear is My Homeboy, became an instant bestseller, which I'm holding up now if you're watching this video. Her mission is to help you be braver than you were yesterday and smash comfort zones by experimenting with fear. Her vision is a world so brave that the word regret has been removed from the dictionary because you are too busy making things happen for yourself. She likes her books non-digital, her wine bubbly, and her music hip-hop. So welcome. Hi, Renee. That's awesome. Can you just follow me around life and introduce me, please? That was really great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So good. I'm honored to be here. Hi, everyone. So um, I picked up your book over the summer, actually. Yeah. And I was on vacation and I, I picked up a bunch of um, inspiring, empowering books. And I picked it up because, quite frankly, the cover is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That was very strategic. Yeah. You know? But they don't tell you when you write a book. I know you, you've you written, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're really responsible for the marketing of your book, right? And right. so I knew when I created this book that, yes, we were going to have juicy content, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to kid you. I wanted this book to be Instagram worthy. Are you kidding me? And it, it just, I love that the cover calls yes. you pink is certainly um, a power color for me. So, and, and it's just, it's, it's a boss color. It's a boss yeah. babe color. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And so, and the cover is probably the least important part of this book because it's really what's inside that is awesome. So let's start there. Um, you're an author now, you're a speaker, you're a CEO, but that wasn't always what you did. How did you get into this work of helping people overcome their fears in order to really live their best life? Mm. Such a beautiful question. And I love that we're starting here. So the answer to that question is this, it's because I've learned through repeated attempts of doing scary things myself and thriving, thriving through it, that you can have any life, any business, any marriage, any relationship, any freaking bank account that you dream of, as long as, disclaimer, <laughs> as long as you are willing to do the uncomfortable work required in order to earn it. So I have learned how to work with my fear using confidence building ideas from the improv theater, which we can talk about. And I've never looked back. So I want to, I want to show people that you can do hard things and not only survive, but thrive, build confidence and turn your dreams into goals. And oh, by the way, have some freaking fun while you're doing it because fear doesn't have to be scary. It can be your, it can be your friend. And I love to create tools that help people have more empowering conversations with their fear, which is really a big reason behind the book title. You know, I wanted to have a playful conversation with fear. You know, I consider homeboy has always been a term of endearment for me, right? Anything I love has always been my homeboy, right? And so <laughs> when I thought about my fear, I said, well, why am I having such a, a a fear-based controlling negative conversation around my fear, why not start to invite it to my life party, have a more empowering conversation and uh, remove that stigma around fear. You know, it doesn't have to be scary. It can do really powerful things. So that's kind of the short answer to why I'm here. I mean, I really, uh, most of my life has been inspired by those confidence building ideas I learned in the improv theater. And like I said, I've never looked back. So let's talk about that for a second, because in your book, you, it, you share your experience of improv. And as I read that, like my heart raced, like that's my worst nightmare. I am like an outliner. I am like, make the list, be prepared. And improv is the complete opposite of that. So how has that inspired your work? 
I love this so much. Okay, so thank you for your honesty. Most people um, would react the same way when they think of like doing live improv or, or being on an improv stage, which by the way, I work primarily as a keynote speaker. A lot of my events have gone virtual. So public speaking is kind of uh, the, the base of my business. And um, one of the parts, my favorite parts of my keynote speeches is I asked for volunteers to come on stage in front of thousands of people and do live improv with me. And what's so awesome about it is you literally watch someone who has no idea about the improv theater or has never done this in their life, get up there, do it succeed, get a ton of laughs and live to talk about it, which shows everybody in the audience that they can do scary things and live to talk about it too. So let me break this down for you. So first things first, I hear you. And I think uh, that's the gift of the improv theater. I'm the same, I'm, I'm a planner, I'm type A, I'm the oldest of four. <laughs> um, you know, I'm kind of always in control, right? And improv is the exact opposite of that. It is about no control because in the improv theater, we have no script and neither do you. I mean, when was the last time, Renee, that you woke up with a script? Now, you may have a to-do list, a big, long, juicy to-do list. You might have some mm -hmm. goals and some dreams and some things you want to get done today. But really, you and I do not have a script ever. And I think this global pandemic has really shown everyone that you are really never in control. And like I said, you can have plans and goals, but we never really know what the future holds. Improv gets you ready for that because while you may not know what's coming next, what you can always control <laughs> is you and how you show up. And the best part, the best part um, is that in the improv theater, it is not about having like the best thing or being the greatest or the smartest. It's always about the next thing. So improv essentially is momentum, which is freaking magic because fear hates momentum because momentum means success and success equals change. And when you change, you may not need your fear as much. So improv is really, um, the study of forward momentum, it's the study of trusting yourself and it's the study of realizing that you can do hard things even mm. without a script. And the more you do this, the stronger and braver you get. Oh, I love that so much. I'm like so pumped up. I wish I had like a little thimble of your energy that I could like shoot every morning and be like, here's like my Judy energy and woohoo, it's awesome. Well, you I'm telling you, Renee, if I could figure out how to bottle this and, and sell it, I would be a bazillionaire. But literally, this is like the vibe, right? I've always, energy has kind of always been my superpower. And I love that you said that because my husband always makes the joke to people. They're, they're like, what's it like being married to Judy? And um, <laughs> by the way, my husband's divorced. I'm his first wife. We share stepkids. And, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm his second wife. That He's my first husband since it's a divorce podcast. So we know all about walking through that journey yeah. and um, supporting him through that. But he always tells people, they're like, what's it like being married to Judy? And he's like, you know, it's basically like every morning getting shot out of a cannon. So you pretty much summed up what my husband says on the regular. That's awesome. So you have a sign behind you that's lit up in neon that says, yes, and yeah. what does that mean? Okay, I love that. So to your last question, uh, when, you, when you think of the improv theater and how those confidence building techniques really help me manage fear, yes, and the two words behind me in neon are probably... The, the most impactful two words that the improv theater gave me. And they really are the foundation of all improv theater training. So let me break that down for you. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs happen when ideas are not just explored, but when they're like heightened and stretched and pulled to levels beyond your wildest dreams, even, even if it feels uncomfortable, even if it feels weird, and most certainly when it feels absurd, because this is really where all the best comedy come from, comes from. And this is where funny, like the funny stuff actually happens. And yes, and helps us stretch and pull and go to these weird places. So basically what it means is yes, is me saying, yes, I see you, I hear you, I am receiving what you just said to me. And 
I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to add something to this and I'm going to move the scene forward. So let's do something tactical here. Renee, you've probably heard this a million times. Uh, I love you, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Your presentation was great, but um, the, 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 the conference is incredible, but. So basically what the but is, is it's controlling. It's mm -hmm. fear-based. It's not collaborative. It's, it's trying to get in there and put your perspective on something because you don't really believe. Like, I love you, but basically means I love you, but I don't really love you. Here's what I really mean, yeah. right? Same with so, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, yes. but is never an apology. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. I mean, so we're always, and I'm always saying in my work, you know, we, we do not like big butts. We want to get the butts out of our language and use more and. So I'll give you some examples on how it would look on the reverse. So you saying, I love you, but you're on your phone too much feels, makes me feel defensive. I love you. And let's put our phones down tonight at dinner so we can connect more. Your presentation was great, but you used too many slides. Oh, that feels icky. Your presentation was great. And you know what? Next time let's use next slides. So less slides rather. So you get where I'm going here. You can take that one word and insert it into your conversations and your meetings and your brainstorming and anything you need to do inside and outside of what you do every day and with your kids, with your family, because it will make you more supportive and collaborative and it'll keep the scenes moving forward. So we use these two words, yes and, to do that. Like someone will come out on stage and say something, right? We get a character and we get a suggestion in the improv theater, right? And so maybe it's like, okay, our scene is like, we're, or we're, our relationship is we're two work colleagues and our, our object, we're going to have an object and it's a wallet, okay? And someone would literally have to start the scene with no script. And the person would say, stop right there, Jeffrey, that's my wallet. And so if I were to go next and I was playing in this scene, I would use that and, yes and to move forward. I would say, yes, Jeffrey, that's my wallet and you've got my hundred bucks in it, give it back. And then that person would say, yeah, it's a hundred bucks, but God, I got to pay my lawyer and that'll help me get my car back or whatever, right? And so we use yes and, yes and, yes and to keep things moving forward, especially when we're building a scene. And yo, those two words can become an anthem, not only, um, for momentum in your life and managing fear, but most certainly for having conversations that are really beautiful and really collaborative and a lot of fun. So what does someone do who feels stuck? And that can be stuck in a job, stuck in a marriage, stuck in whatever bad situation that they're in that doesn't fulfill them. What do they do when they're afraid of taking that first step forward? Because that's what paralyzes people. It's, it's yeah. the uncertainty. It's the overwhelm. It's not knowing what is comes out the other side. Where do they start? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I would say the second you realize that fear only has one freaking job and that job is to stop you, you set yourself free, free because every single time Maybe I say it this way, every single second you spend self-doubting, self-sabotaging, overthinking, comparing, <laughs> procrastinating, I bet I'm saying some buzzwords here that literally 99.9% .9 of us deal with every single day. Every time you participate in those fear-based behaviors, fear is winning. So if fear has one job and fear's job is to stop you, then your job is to move, even if it's small. And so when we get paralyzed with inaction, because, because sometimes the scary thing we need to do feels so overwhelming because it is so overwhelming. So even if you can take one small action, you are going to start to lessen the hold and the grip that fear has on you. So we don't need you to run the marathon. Maybe today you just sign up for the race. We don't need you to lose 10 pounds today. Maybe you don't need to lose 10 pounds today. Let's just go for a walk. You, you don't need to have divorce totally figured out. Today, maybe you just buy a book that can help you or you research a therapist that could support you in your journey. So it's all about momentum. When you're paralyzed with fear, fear's winning. So your job mm -hmm. is to move. And, and even if it's a little bit, 
even if it's a small action towards the goal that you want on the other side of that rainbow, um, you're, you're winning, right? You start to get more control back and remove the power fear has over you. So I'm always telling people, small, consistent, daily actions. That is the kryptonite to fear. Fear hates that. So do you consider yourself someone who is fearless? <laughs> Ooh, we have to have a conversation about this word, Renee. <laughs> so, okay. Why do you think I brought it up? I know. You've read the book. Okay, I so have. <laughs> let's talk about this. Okay. So if there's one word I loathe, it's the word fearless, right? So everybody, but see, here's the thing. This is why we're so confused about fear, Renee. Like everybody's telling us to go be fearless. There's fearless t-shirts and jewelry and bumper stickers and books and songs and all this stuff, right? Everybody's telling you to go be fearless, but think about it. If you were really fearless, you would do all kinds of crazy stuff. You would you would never go to a doctor. You would never pay your taxes. You would eat poisonous food on purpose. You would do all, you'd walk out into traffic. You'd do all kinds of crazy stuff. And there's this line in the beautiful book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. If you've never read it, mark it down. You are going to love, love, love this book. It's all about creative living and really just living life beyond fear, right? But she says this in the book about fearless and I loved it so much. She said, listen, the only fearless people I know are five-year-olds and sociopaths. So <laughs> we do not want to be fearless. We want to be brave. And our goal, your goal should really to be it should really be trying to figure out how to fear your fear just a little bit less every day. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, oh my God, I'm not fearless. I'm afraid all the time. Well, welcome to the club. I'm one of the biggest Freddy cats you'll ever meet, but I'm also one of the bravest people you'll ever meet because I keep going. I do things scared. I run the reps. I lift the weights of discomfort on the regular. And the more I do this, the stronger I get. And if I can do it, so can you, right? So we shouldn't want to be fearless. Set yourself free. Let go of that right now and, and start chasing brave and just begin to work on fearing your fear just a little bit less every single day. And before you know it, you're going to start having a different conversation with your fear. I promise you that. You have a chapter in your book called The Universe Has Your Back. So what role does the universe have in someone's fearless or fear, do it brave. anyway, brave, yeah. <laughs> brave. See, I'm learning brave you, you got it, girl. journey <laughs> because a lot it. of times people hear universe and they think woo woo and they sort of turn it off. So yeah. let's talk about that because I'm a huge believer too. Um, yeah. and I love all of that stuff. I love that chapter. So what, where did, where does that fit in this journey? Yeah. yeah. Um, very important, very beautiful, very powerful question. So let's get woo-woo for a minute, but let's get woo-woo with some street cred on it. And let's talk about why this really works. So I truly believe, I mean, personally, I believe that you are always exactly where you are supposed to be. I mean, even even in the hard seasons, especially in the hard seasons, even in unfair situations, we've all been in them. And even in the middle of a freaking pandemic that has crushed our economy and a lot of people's livelihoods, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. So when you choose, and this is gonna be big, when you choose to see your life only through the lens of possibility and positivity, you become unstoppable and here's why. Because you start to realize that things are always happening for you, not to you. And you have a choice every single day to either be a victim or you can be a badass, right? You can be a victim or you can be a badass. So I choose to see my life through the lens of possibility and positivity because I know, A, it's going to help me with my anxiety, and I know it's going to keep me moving in forward momentum. And P.S., I'm going to put a little disclaimer on this for you and everyone listening right now because there is a lot going on in the world, and I want you to hear this loud and clear. Your positivity does not discount that there is pain in this world, and your 
optimism does not deny that people are suffering. But what it does do is it keeps you moving forward in a healthy way. And it means, it means you've made a choice to be the light in a world that can feel really, really dark in situations that can get really, really dark. So I liken it to, there's a lot of people, I mean, and we go, everybody goes in their ups and downs, right? And there's certainly things that are going on in our life right now that are really tough in our family. And then there's seasons where things are really great, but I know that the people that can give me light and life and positivity are the are, are the gifts that I need in that season. And I love to return the favor when it's a season for me that feels um, a little bit more joyful because I think there's people that are, we all know there that are really struggling and maybe what you're going through right now is really tough um, and it feels hard to be positive. But I want you to know that anytime you do feel positive, it doesn't discount that there is pain. And I also want you to really think about this one thing, this, this notion that you can either be a victim to all the stuff that's happening to you or you can rise up and choose to be a badass. Man, that choice, that choice, that choice is always yours. I, I love that. And it fits perfectly with what I teach my clients too, because often the people who are really stuck, they're the ones looking for the outside um, to solve their problems. And they're, they're looking for someone to fix them, their, their spouse, their lawyer. Um, they're looking for someone to tell them how to pay their bills or what to do with their time when they don't have their kid. And the people who really thrive through that are the ones who look inside and say, okay, what can I do to make sure I can pay my bills or to make sure that um, I'm good post-divorce. So and it's, it's that shift of expecting someone else to answer your problems and being the victim when it doesn't to, to for, um, finding solutions to your own problems so that you are empowered to make those decisions and you absolutely will never be the victim in the situation. I mean, Mike, drop, Mike, drop, right? That is the truth. And blame, blaming others and making excuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are all ways fear, always fear shows up. Remember, fear's got one job to stop you. And if fear can stop you, okay, great. You know what I mean? You're not going to get anything done in your life. You'll stay stuck safe and just the same exactly where fear wants you. But if you can rise up, if you can make a change, if you can learn something new, figure out how to balance your checkbook, get a good lawyer, hire a therapist, read some books, figure out what to do with the kids. Kids. Oh my gosh, move out, get to, like your life changes. Oh God, I'm exhausted. <laughs> right, right. And but, and, but it can feel so overwhelming. Yeah. All of that, like somebody listening right now might have an end goal in mind. They want happiness. They want love. They want to be free from maybe something they're in that doesn't feel right or isn't serving them. And that can feel a really long ways away. So forget about all that. What can you yeah. do today? What can you do today? And um, when you see yourself as the heroine, right? The star of your own movie and, the, yeah. and the, the hero in your own story, you really start to have more confident conversations with yourself because dude, this is your life. And there's three words that should inspire everybody. You will die. You will die. Death and taxes. <laughs> like none of us are getting out of this alive. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do with this beautiful Judy, life? Judy, that might be the name of this podcast episode. <laughs> you will, you will die. die with Judy Holler. <laughs> Oh, great. That's perfect. I know. Totally Just good. kidding. <laughs> well, it's perfect. I don't know when it'll come out, but it is the month of Halloween, but we're meaning, yes, but it is the truth. Isn't that the, I mean, the, the tr it have truer words ever been spoken. Right. It's and I'm always thinking about that, yo. Like we were just talking about this the other day, one of my best friends, you know, with everything going on, you know, with people getting furloughed and losing jobs and industries collapsing. I have a lot of friends in the live events and meetings industry, right? So most of my friends and they're in marriages, like where they're both in the industry and people are losing their jobs and not being able to pay mortgages and didn't save and didn't plan and a lot of stress, right? And um, we were talking about this notion that, you know, we, we would go on so many trips and we went on so many cool things and we did all these great experiences and I'm like, dude, I have no regrets about any of that. I'm so glad I used my airline miles and cash in those points. And we, we made the joke that be smart, right? Save for your future, pay yourself first, invest, save. You have to, you have to take good care of yourself as a woman. You've got to be able to stand on your own two feet. Mm -hmm. That said, 
drink the vuv, light the good candles, put on the, the nice jeans. You know what I mean? Like you're wearing a fur right now. Wear the fur, right? Do it, do it. Because we don't know if we get tomorrow. So for anybody listening, I hope that inspires you too. But I'm like, drink the vuv. Be smart, yeah. but drink the vuv. Right yes. after this interview, I'm going <laughs> to go. pop the cork. <laughs> All it. right. So you mentioned something that I do want to ask you about is anxiety, because mm. I feel like that, I mean, I feel like there's so many people in my circle and it's almost like when you get to a certain age, like it kicks in, it's like, Hey, you're 40 here. have some anxiety with, yeah. with this new decade. So what, what do you do personally to really deal with that? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the club. Yes, yes, yes. I think most people have acute anxiety now. I think people who have never struggled, struggled with anxiety are, it's like, welcome to the party. Welcome to a day in my brain. Right. And I think it's funny because, well, not funny in a, in a disrespectful way, but when this pandemic hit, I was like, thank God I'm an improviser, which means we embrace the plot twist. We can really navigate uh, without a script and we're used to uncomfortable situations. But then I also thought, Oh my gosh, you know, thank God I've had anxiety my whole life. I know what this feels like. I can yeah. do this, right? And so, yes, there are definitely some things that I do to help me navigate anxiety. Number one, and you've heard me talk about it a couple of times, my, I call it micro dosing. So going small to go big, like breaking things down into small windows. And I really think January 1st is a comfort zone. And I think New Year's resolutions are like January goals if you make it to the end of January. So I really operate most of my life and business into what I call a 90 day year. And then I break it down from there. So, you know, I am certainly dreaming about things in the future and I have long-term goals, of course, but none of that matters if you're not taking action today. And so I'm always thinking, okay, what is 20, 32 Judy look like, right? But what am I doing today to make sure she becomes a reality? So go small, go small to go big, work in small windows. I operate, like I said, out of a 90 day year. And this really helps me take a deep breath and uh, complete tasks in smaller windows and get big re results. And there is a lot of science and research around this notion that when you break things into small windows, 30, 60, 90 days, you will double your chances of achieving mm -hmm. results. And personally, I've seen like, a, I don't know, I'd say 89, 90% ROI return on investment uh, on my goal focused planning and, and really working in short windows. So that's, that's like tip number one. Do you do anything like that? How are you? I do. Both? I I'm exactly, I work exactly that way. I have my month plan. I have my three month, my six month, and then I'm constantly rewriting it. And yeah. th that's, I mean, that's, th but I'm a, I'm a list maker. That's who I yeah. am. I'm not an improv girl. <laughs> It's I'm planning. Okay. It's okay. I'm a planner too. It's so funny. We're actually creating a planner and we could talk about this in a little bit, but I'm literally my, one of my dreams has been to, um, for the last five years, create a goal focused planner that kind of takes the elements of everything I love. I literally work with, you're going to three different planners. I have three planners that I carry around everywhere and use to organize my life. So I'm, I'm creating something right now. that's going to have everything in one, but that is an anxiety reducing tool for me because it gives yeah. me focus and fear hates focus because when you're focused, you're really hard to stop. And remember, fear hates momentum. So goal focused planning and like small windows are designed to give you momentum, which is designed to uh, move through fear, right? D is designed to help you move through fear. And then I would think like practically, I mean, you've heard this a million times and you know, you, you, it works <laughs> if you're willing to do the uncomfortable work, but moving your body. Yeah. Like for me, oh my God, do you work out and stuff for me? I do. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I have to, it's, it's, it's a mental health thing for me. And if I don't, I'm miserable. Like you, I will come home and my husband will be like, you haven't worked out in a couple days. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with like, yeah. Hey, you need to lose weight. It's just like, I'm a better person <laughs> when I've sweated. A thousand percent. So move <laughs> body, move your body. Um, I take, like, I love CBD that, that works for me. I use, um, uh, a lot of, a lot of essential oils. I love music, hanging out with friends. I really try to set boundaries with my tech, not looking at it, um, yeah. late in the night and charging my phone across the room that helps my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And another thing I've been doing lately, Renee, is I've been like, I love to read like personal development, podcasts, all the stuff. And sometimes I can like, 
I believe there's a thing like inspirational overdosing. So I like, you know, I, I listen during the day and I set times to listen. Like when I get ready, when I curl my hair, I, or all that stuff. I, I hate getting ready. So I listen to my podcast and listen to audiobooks when I'm getting ready. It's great. Two birds, one stone. But this new thing I've been doing before bed is I have been knee deep in fiction books, like uh-huh. fiction, 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 fiction before bed. And it just, I, my phone's across the room. I don't, um, I have my alarm set, so I have to get out of my bed to get it in the morning. That's another thing. But I let myself go. I don't do any yeah. personal development or any sort of um, that kind of reading before bed. I just get my mind off the world. And fiction has been a lot of fun. And my husband and also, I also love watching like, cop, you know, you know, I'll find myself watching like comedians in cars getting coffee or just things that <laughs> get my mind off the world a little bit and into... Um, into a happy place. You What's know? your favorite fiction that you've read recently? Oh my gosh. Well, my all time favorite fiction book is um, The Nightingale by yep. Kristen Hanna. Okay. Have mm-hmm. you read that one? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm reading right now, yo, American Dirt. Have you heard of it? Oh, I've heard about it. <laughs> There's all kinds of uh, back stories and controversies and all that. Do you like it? Okay. I had no, okay. I guess mm-hmm. I just don't look around. I kind of stopped watching a lot of news and reading a bunch of stuff. We, I check it with different times. So I have no idea about the controversy, but I stumbled upon it when I was looking for a new book, like Amazon suggested it on my, um, you know, my, my Kindle. And I grabbed it and like the first sentence, the first paragraph, you're literally like, what is happening? It is intense. Mm. It's like all drug cartel yeah. um, stuff. And it was an Oprah book club thing. And I had no idea. I just started reading and I was like, what is happening? So it's intense intense but i'm liking it i i like stuff like that yeah so. yeah me too <laughs> so what made you write your own book because your book has been out is it a year yet okay so yeah it has okay. been a year um it'll be two years co- this coming may may 2021 so um i feel so grateful it came out when it did and i'm so grateful it's out now because you know it's just it, i think the the ideas in the book can serve people certainly the the ideas in the improv theater can certainly help people now more than ever but it's funny like I really wrote the book in full transparency. Like I, I, I'm a professionally, I'm a professional keynote speaker, right? I, I began, I didn't set out to go be that. It just sort of happened. I started speaking for free and you know, like you, I, I speak, I know you do a lot of speaking. I know you're a lawyer, but you also do a lot of speaking mm-hmm. and it turned into a, a really lucrative career for me and something I love doing. So I ha- have had a performance background and I, I never really thought that I was like, oh, I'm going to grow up and be an author and write a book and all these things. But I was watching all of my friends who were these badass keynote speakers with all these best-selling books. And everybody's like, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. And I really did it initially as a marketing strategy, right? Yeah, yeah. To get more exposure and to be taken seriously and to really monetize my ideas and to build programs and to be a smart CEO boss babe, right? <laughs> so um, I, I wrote it for that reason and I had no idea that I would fall in love with the process, that I would love writing so much. And what began as a marketing tool really became um, so much more. It, it became an instant Amazon bestseller. It's currently being translated into two languages. I mean, the amazing Mel Robbins. Robbins has endorsed it. Yep. And in my favorite, it's it's become a community. We've built an entire community of fear bosses. We call ourselves the fear boss fam. Uh, it's become a community, a lifestyle, a, mon- a mindset, and a mantra that just empowers people to be brave. And I'm so damn proud of that. So yeah, now we're on, we've got a workbook and we're creating a planner and book number two will come out in 2022. And there, it's just, it's created a ripple effect of, and it's my goodness, we've been in airports. We're in airports all over the, the United States. And it's just so, the people Amazing. that I've gotten to meet, right? And just, it's just such an honor. Every day I kind of wake up so grateful for it and so glad I did it. And if I have any regrets, um, I don't have many, but I think any regret I have in life is not doing something sooner, mm. right? And there's probably someone listening right now that is wanting to do something. And the only regret you're gonna have is not doing it sooner. Cause let me tell you, it works out just the way it's supposed to work out. And you and I were talking about this when we got on the air before we, we hit the yep, like yep. go live button, right? But you know, it really, there is so much beauty on the other side of something that's scaring you. And the second you trust yourself enough to just go and to move and to, and to take a little forward momentum for yourself I and mean, you're, the only thing you're gonna regret is not doing it sooner. Does it, yeah. does it mean it's gonna be easy? 
Hell no. Is it going to be tough? Hell yes. But are you tougher? Oh, you bet you are. Mm -hmm. And the reward outside at the other end is so meaningful and so fulfilling. And you might have worked, it might have been really hard to get there, but a year later, two years later, you might be living the best life that oh. you never thought that you would be able to live. So I love it. I have one final question for you, but before I get there, um, I could talk to you all day, by the way. So, and, and just for, so the listeners know, I um, found Judy. I stalked her after I read her book. And I think like I was sitting in New Hampshire reading it and then I tagged her and then my podcast launched and I'm like, I'm going to ask her because I just love your energy. Your podcast is dynamite. Like I, I told you before we got on, I binged. I don't even know how many episodes that must have been at least eight or nine um, driving to my son's soccer game. They're so good. So inspiring and so energetic. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so, so where do we find you? How do we follow you? How do we connect? And of course, all of this is going to be in the show notes. Oh, this is so amazing. So grateful to you and for your community and just thanks for the love. And yes, oh my gosh, let's stay connected. So Instagram, you and I are friends on Instagram. So um, that's probably the best place to hang out with me at Judy, J-U-D-I, last name Holler. Holler, like best <laughs> last name ever. Um, and that is my maiden last name. I When I got married to my husband, I did not change my last name. Plus my business was already built. My brand was there, but still yeah. I'm like, that is the best last name. So Judy Holler um, <laughs> is the best place to find me on Instagram. Of course, uh, my book is on Amazon. We'll be back up on Audible like any freaking hour. We have been off of Audible because the publisher um, had their, that's a whole long story. I'm not even going to get into it, but we're on Audible, Barnes and Noble airports. And um, I wanted to tell you, and you could put this in the show notes, I've got a little free gift for your, your ah, listeners. We love gifts. So if y'all text um, brave, the word brave to the number 474747, super easy. Um, you can test drive a couple chapters of my book for free and you'll get some cool screensavers and some journaling pages and just some fun freebies as a thank you for listening. But the, and then plus it connects you to our community too. So that's just a great way to stay in touch. And we've got a planner coming. Oh my God, Renee. I can't wait so for yes. that. <laughs> Put yeah. me in for the pre-order. <laughs> Girl, I'm going to send you one. Don't you worry. You're going to get one. One. So, um, so I, yeah. I have two things. Um, one, the last name thing. I just did a post about this and got like a crazy amount of feedback because this is a hot topic for people. But your last name, it's so funny because I'm a Boston girl. So what, what we do in Boston though, is we don't say the ER and we, we drop it and it becomes uh, anyway. So to me, you are Judy Halla, which is your production company. Yes. <laughs> I had to work. <laughs> I had to work on actually saying holler. <laughs> you, could, you know what? You Most people call me holla, right? Judy, holla, holla. So anytime right. you want, girl, just do it, do it, do it. <laughs> okay, final question. What's the last thing that you've done despite being afraid of it? Oh my gosh. Um... Yeah, I, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm scared most days. And one of the things we talk about in the fear boss community is conducting daily fear experiments, right? So one of my journaling, pro, and a fear experiment is just anything time you get a little uncomfortable. It's like wearing a fur on a podcast, something you're not used to. You're probably used to that, right? But <laughs> like wearing your, a color you're not used to or trying a new food or listening to new music. Like the goal of a fear experiment is to get uncomfortable regularly, to get more comfortable being uncomfortable. So the reason I say that is I'm always journaling every day how am I going to get uncomfortable today? Um, and at the end of the day, did I get uncomfortable today? And how did that feel? Like, what was my fear experiment? So just, uh, so every day I'm doing something big and small. And I would say my fear experiment today is just anytime I'm on a podcast, anytime yeah. I have to like go on camera and put myself out there. And yes, I'm a professional speaker, but damn, it is scary. You know, but the more you do it, the better you get. So, yeah. I mean, that certainly is a fear experiment today. But yesterday I had one and we had to, um, I had to set a boundary with a client who was kind of crossing the line. And I hate, no, you're a lawyer. Yeah. You could probably teach me a few things. My husband's so good at confrontation. I hate it. Yeah. And I, I do I, too. You? Even though I'm a lawyer, I hate it <laughs> because I do it all day professionally. I hate it in my personal life. Oh my God. It's mm -hmm. so hard. It never yeah. gets easier, but you can get stronger. And so I'm really trying to run the drills on that. And so I did it. I, 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 
I um, set a boundary with a client and it felt really good. It was scary as hell. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, and I did so good because I said what I needed to say. And then I just shut up and there was like this 30 second awkward silence and I did not speak. And I was so proud of myself <laughs> and it worked itself out and it I got my point across. And I just, I feel stronger because of it still today, 24 hours oh, later. Awesome. So yesterday I got uncomfortable by doing that. And today, um, we crushed this podcast. Together. Yes, we did. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on here. And I am so inspired and I am just so excited to share this episode because I know that my listeners are going to love it too. So thank you. Same back at you and stay brave. It was an honor to be here.